Welcome back. You're watching Front Row. A lot of questions, comments, observations on the show. Let's take a look at what you have to say and what uh, some of the questions you have posed to our panelists tonight as we continue with the show. Janem Limited starts us off asking, my question is to Morris. How do we prevent double taxation of commodities? We'll be having him respond to that shortly. Anonymous on Slido says, the reduction of 14% VAT to 14% VAT and reduction of pay has not helped the common monanchi. What other ways could the government have done to cushion its citizens? I think this would also go to Morris and, of course, um, uh, both our uh, panelists, Wangari and Sandeep, could try and weigh in on that. Uh, Hassan Bai asks, the tax measure is supportive of the rich from my perspective. My question to Sandeep, from what has already been discussed on the emerging damage to SMEs we've heard of, We've heard of minimum tax. What is the effect of this? We have it at 1%, which is significantly high compared to other countries where it is at 0%. So Hassan Bai, they're really um, asking on uh, um, how then do we work around this and especially on the minimum tax. Um, Mr. Morisori has also talked about it, so perhaps he'll weigh in on that as well. And um, Anonymous saying, uh, informative show, thank you. And concerned citizen asking, we should continue using technology as we, are now, uh, as we are now during the pandemic and avoid expensive and necessary travel by civil servants and government officials. Will the government sustain this trend or go back to expensive travels and meetings in the name of boosting the economy? So what should be our new normals post-COVID-19? What are some of the significant changes do we need to make to ensure that we grow our tax collections? Perhaps we start with uh, Maurice because the first question was on him. Let's... Uh, Take a look at it again, a question on how we can um, stop or avoid double taxation for the uh, Kenyans, of course. Uh, Mr. Morris, I believe you got that a bit clearly. The first question, the first question we got there from John M. Limited asking, how do we prevent double taxation of uh, of commodities and uh, the next one where someone asks what other ways could the government have done uh, what other measures could we have put in place to cushion its citizens because it says 14 percent vat and pay is not very helpful mr maurice please speak to us on uh, those two questions there from slido.com yes uh, th 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 thank you very much i have a feeling you have you have uh, re rephrased the question on how do you prevent double taxation? Actually, it was a very simple one-line question. How do we prevent yes. double taxation? You have added something yeah. that changed the meaning because you said, how do you prevent double taxation of commodities? So that changed the whole thing. Uh -huh. But now I'll, I'll take the question as it is, Yes. the original one. Yes. Now, first of all, let's, let's have a uh, clear, make it clear that there's a difference mm -hmm between income tax mm -hmm. and VAT. VAT is levied on commodities and services. Income tax is levied on a person's income. So with that understanding, then I can explain. Yes. Uh, now, um, when I, I believe he's asking this in the context of uh, the, 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 the provisions that are under the, either the Tax Loss Amendment Act mm -hmm. or the Finance Bill. And uh, basically, I take it that it's asking the question in line of the minimum tax. Yes. And minimum tax is tax on income. And for Kenyan residents, the law clearly states that if you are paid the normal tax, then the minimum tax will be taken as a credit, an advance payment. So it doesn't result into a double taxation. Now, on VAT, which is at 14% following the, the, the adjustment, VAT is tax on commodities and is paid by the consumer, not the person who earns the income. And it is only charged once at the point of the consumption is when VAT, the impact of VAT crystallizes. Yeah. So there is no double taxation. Mm -hmm. We are taxing the consumer and the person who is earning the income. They are different people. I believe it, it, it is in that context that he was asking that question. Yes. In terms of the local transactions. Mm 
if we go international, then uh, it would be, I, would, I would not like to complicate it at this level mm. because international tax, uh, taxation mm. has its own rules. And of course, countries get into agreements for purposes of avoidance of double taxation. There's a question. So, uh, yes. I'll, I'll, uh, so that uh, in the interest of time, I'll move to the next question. Yes. But I'm ready to clarify further on that issue. Mm -hmm. Now, the second question was about uh, the reduction on the tax rates. And uh, the person concerned was, uh, uh, was concerned that uh, despite the government reducing the tax rates, it has not impacted on the consumers. Mm -hmm. That is unfortunate. I would like to say that's unfortunate because one thing, for income tax purposes, the disposable income of the, uh, of the taxpayers, individual, individuals and companies, their disposable income actually increased. And that is a factual matter. Mm -hmm. Now, if I expect that if the disposable income has increased, then there is a positive impact on the receiver of that income. In equal measure, VAT, reduction of in, in VAT, should lead to a reduction in the cost of consumption, the cost of goods and services. And if it has not crystallized down to the consumer, then we need to ask a question. Is there a problem in the supply chain? Then we can address that administratively because we cannot uh, do that through the law. What we, the best that you can do in the law is to reduce the cost of the goods or services that are purchased, which we expect should flow from the reduction on VAT. Mm -hmm. Then that, that question on why is it not working, then there's a problem somewhere. And that problem is in the supply chain, not in the tax laws. Um, the last issue that was raised is the rate of minimum tax. Yeah. And I, I alluded to that when uh, I was discussing uh, the, the general issues. And uh, you will appreciate that uh, the rate of 1% mm -hmm. on turnover is much, much lower. There are countries that actually impose minimum tax at a rate of even 15%. What is important to look at is the base on which the tax is levied. And, uh, if you look at the countries that levy the minimum tax on turnover, then you'll, you'll agree with me that the rate that we picked of 1% was, is, uh, was actually much, much lower than compared to comparative countries, including Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, and, uh, yes and no. Maybe we can relook at the rate. But I believe that the rate that we picked is much lower. Mm -hmm. Unless now we say that uh, we reduce it and then look at it later. But that will not help us in terms of dealing the issues that I mentioned. All right. All right. Thank you. Let's, yes, thank uh, you. All right. Let's now engage uh, our other panelists. I uh, see we don't have too much time left. Um, earlier on, before we went on a break, uh, Mr. Morris already spoke expansively on the finance bill and the proposals therein uh, from the National Treasury and uh, why they made decisions that they made. Mr. Sanjeev, from the questions there that have been asked, there was a mention of uh, um, uh, what Morris has just talked about, the minimum tax. But let's see the other questions as we get you to react to a number of them just from concerned citizens let's take a look at the other questions all right um kim um oh, brings it back to Maurice, so we'll have him respond to it in his closing remarks the finance bill proposes to reintroduce some tax measures that were shot down by the national assembly barely a month ago such tax measures include but not limited to vat on lpg removal of exemption on income to pensioners aged 65 years and above, et cetera. What has changed? We'll have Mr. Morris um, uh, Ore speak to us on that in his closing remarks. Um, 
CVX says businesses making tax losses will not benefit from the tax reduction. To make their situation even more dire, the government is introducing a minimum tax on such companies. Is the government not dancing on the graves of the dying? I believe uh, uh, Mr. Ori has really uh, spoke expansively on that. Genem Limited, um, of course, we um, saw that. And his question really was on double taxation of commodities, uh, Mr. Morris. But thank you, you spoke on that expansively. Let's um, have Sandeep speak to us on what he was asked on that these tax measures really seem to be supportive of the rich uh, from Hassan Bai's perspective and he asked that what has already been discussed on emerging damage to SMEs we've heard of minimum tax what is the effect of this on SMEs Sandeep you'll answer to that of course as you react to um, uh, some of the submissions there by the Kerry De Deputy Commissioner especially on the proposals in the finance bill that you earlier said you had some concerns on yeah, uh, thanks for that. Um, basically, on the minimum tax that uh, Morris has alluded to, I can confirm that when Tanzania actually introduced this sometime in 2007 or 8, the initial rate was at 0.3%, and the guideline which they have uh, currently in place is that they will not tax these businesses in the first year of operation, and that they will actually monitor it up to a third year of operation. That rate now has moved to 0.5%. Uh, in, uh, in 2015, actually. Uh, Nigeria, again, have that rate at 0.5%. And look, we totally understand that we are not in business to make losses, but then the government must be cognizant of the fact that most of these losses that are incurred by manufacturing, by the manufacturing sector specifically, are as a result of the tax incentives, which again have been uh, uh, reduced by the Tax Laws Amendments Act. I just mentioned that the 100% the is no longer uh, given in first year of use. It's actually spread over three years, 50%, 25, 25. So that essentially means that I could be in a tax paying position in the first year of operation, depending on my level of investment. So for me, I think the minimum tax would only make a positive impact on the economy if the guidelines issued by uh, National Treasury, Kenya Revenue Authority are actually uh, very crisp and clear on how this minimum tax will be operated within the Kenyan economy. All, all right, and quickly, just your response on the finance bill and what was discussed by Mr. Ore as we get to the others on their closing remarks. Yeah, uh, thanks for that. So on the finance bill, uh, based on my analysis and uh, the analysis done by uh, various consultants, including KPMG, uh, it is very evident that, as Maurice mentioned or alluded to earlier, the idea or the, the goal is to actually increase the tax base. And that will also, also help then the government uh, meet its daily expenditure. Uh, because of the tax reliefs that the government has given in terms of the 25% reduction uh, for both corporate and pairs yuan, as well as the, uh, the other reliefs that have been mentioned, uh, the government is seeking to uh, increase the tax base. Uh, just a point of clarification in terms of the VAT, yes, I do agree with Maurice that the reduction of 16 to 14% is actually targeted at the end user in terms of products becoming cheaper. But then case in point is uh, issues like the medicaments and the vaccines for humans. Zero, uh, moving them from zero rated to now exempting them actually means that the manufacturers of such uh, uh, you know, uh, vaccines or medicaments will now pass on that additional cost to the end users. So I'm not sure how uh, that's going to benefit. And even during the KPMG CAM survey, uh, most manufacturers did actually allude to the fact that the 2% uh, is very minimum, given that 14% is the lowest in the East African market, but it is not really helping. What the SME sector really are, are looking for is the release of the 10 billion uh, shillings estimated uh, in the stimulus package by the president. Is this, is this what you're looking forward for to, Victor, Victor Tieno, yeah. you speak for the MCS and the uh, SMEs, not MCS, SMEs in this particular discussion. Uh, do you agree with Sandeep there that what really you're looking forward to is the 10 billion announced there um, in the economic stimulus package announced by the president? And do you think this will go a long way in cushioning SMEs in the country? What should be the do's and don'ts as far as this is concerned? Yeah, so I think um, we, uh, going back to official data from KenBS, 
uh, the last, I think, two, three years, we've had SMEs uh, dying at a rate of 75% in the first three years. So I'm even worried that, you know, we are taxing ca companies that are already uh, going to close shop. Yeah, so that's number one. So I think what we need to do is we need to give SMEs a, a, a growth moratorium to ensure that they're able to capture more value in the market, then tax them after they've maybe broken even and are able to capture value in the market. But also to just to answer a question, uh, uh, there was a concern around, around digital tax. Yes. And I think uh, the, 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 the measures that are there as is uh, is very amorphous. I think what the government needs to do is to adopt the OECD measures that are, that are, that are measures that have been, are recommendations that OECD has given uh, in terms of how to tax uh, the digital economy. And there are, there are issues around minimum uh, turnovers where below which you can't tax. Uh, the, the companies must have broken even and I think uh, issues around users. But I think more broadly, uh, it's pushing us to have the discussion of how are we going to support our maybe startups who are either uh, tech-based or SMEs that have uh, a tech element to it. We've seen countries such as Tunisia and Senegal enact startup bills that are starting to have those conversations where you, 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 you now you know, recognize startups and allow them because they are the next uh, economic uh, trajectory in terms of helping the country grow. So I think uh, uh, issues around the digital economy is good, but I think we need to have institute measures that can be able to protect the local uh, uh, business so that they, we don't kill them before they even start. All right. Thank you. Uh, Wangare, your closing remarks as we um, head towards the tail end of the show tonight. Uh, thank you, Akisa. I think part of what we were seeing in the in the finance bill is that uh, there's a real push to uh, towards uh, reducing the exemptions, which I think is really good, and I think it goes towards widening the tax base. Now, exemptions uh, have been said to actually cost the country about 400 billion, and if we're talking about stimulus packages at about 50 billion and such, you can imagine the the amount of good that this 400 billion can actually do to the economy. So I think that's a positive thing that we're seeing uh, going forward. I think there's pluses and minuses within the exemptions, but I think overall in terms of widening the tax base, I think it's quite important. Um, I think also that in terms of um, the taxes, we shouldn't be looking more to piling on more and more taxes on people who are, who are already paying um, taxes. We need to be looking about uh, looking to widening the tax base to include more of the informal sector. And now this is much harder, uh, it's much easier said than done, but I think if we put more energies into widening the tax base, uh, through uh, including the informal sector, that would be good because right now the country is ra is raising revenues mainly from VAT and PayYE, and these are, this comes from less about 20% of the population of, of the working population. So we really need to make sure that that works. We need to rectify that and make sure that it's a more balanced uh, effect that we have uh, on on the nation. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Morris, I'll have you have the last word on this, perhaps because you joined us a bit later. There's a question you needed to respond, especially around uh, pension and generally your closing remarks in under a minute, if you can. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, let me re-emphasize uh, the issue that needs to be taken uh, as we have, as we finalize this discussion. Uh, the amendments that the government has done through the Tax Loss Amendment Act and even the Finance Bill does not in any way introduce new taxes. Because if you look at the Income Tax Act, it specifically provides that anybody earning income which is derived from Kenya uh, should uh, pay tax. And that is the main reason why when we looked at the law, okay. then we found some gaps that needed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And the gaps were, the main intention was to that now expand the tax base. But one thing that happens mm -hmm. every time you expand a tax base, okay. you need also to look at the tax burden. Okay. And uh, that is basically what we looked at at right. these difficult times, because right. nobody could imagine that in these times, the government right. would accept to reduce corporate tax All right, thank by you. 5%. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. That's how we wrap it up here.
uh, on uh, front row, Mr. Maurice Ores, the KRA Deputy Commissioner for Corporate Policy, Sandeep Singh, uh, Associate Director in Tax and Head of Enterprise at KPMG, Ongari Moikia, a tax and economic analyst, as well as Victor Otieno, Managing Director, VIFA Consult Limited, as well as speaking for them, SMEs here, uh, just uh, joining us to try and unpack issues around tax measures in the country. I'll be seeing you again next week on Front Row, same time, same place, as uh, we take a look at another subject around the disruptions of COVID-19 and what would be the way forward for us. Thank you for joining us. My name